Crikey, this knee is just something else, isn't it? That is not very nice at all. That if a tooth pierces through into a body cavity, it can damage organs, it can set up nasty infections. I'm worried he'll come out and he'll just run across the road again and there's so much traffic. He could get hit with a car. These dogs have had no upbringing, no socialisation, no training, no fun, no joy. And as a result, they just have nothing to give. This week on Bondi Vet. I have rather a special case here that I'd like you to have a look at. Okay. Jill's about to introduce Scott to a victim of extreme long-term neglect. Hello, buddy. This is Jimmy. He's come from a, a hoarding situation and he's got a big problem with his hind legs. Okay. Jimmy was found locked up in a small cage, covered in his own excrement. The three-year-old border collie had been forced to spend his life in a crouched position, unable to stand up. And how long do you think he was there for? I think he was born there. Oh I don't know, but I think goodness. he was. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy. I've had the misfortune of seeing quite a number of cruelty cases in my career. That's yeah, a good boy. But Jimmy good boy. was off the scale when it came to just plain neglect. This dog was left in a cage pretty much to rot. Come on, Jim Jim. Good boy. Good boy. I think what angers me the most when it comes to animal cruelty is that these are innocent creatures that haven't asked to be owned by these horrendous people. They haven't deserved what's happened to them and it makes me want to defend them and defend them I will. Come on. You know what he walks like? He walks like he's on hot coals, doesn't yeah. he? Like he's yeah. right up yeah. on, on his toes, yeah. like walking yeah. really, really gingerly. Yeah. The left leg is definitely weaker than yeah. the right. You can see he's actually lifting that yeah. one up. Poor guy. I actually think I'm getting worse as I get older at coping with it because emotionally it's draining. There's hardly a day goes by that I don't shed tears over these dogs. All right then, let's pop you in the back of the car. We'll go and see Michael. Scott has made an appointment for Jimmy with specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. I think Jill has already developed a really strong bond with Jimmy. She really has a soft spot for him, you can tell. And I know that it's really worrying for her. Good boy. He is going to need a lot of complex work, and she knows that. See you soon, Jimmy. So, of course, she's very nervous about me taking him, but I know she trusts my judgment, and I am really taking him to the best place possible. Hello, mate. Hey, Scott. Are things all right? Great to see you. Yeah, you very too. Very good. You too. So let me show you a very special patient. This is Jimmy. He was rescued from a place where he was basically kept in a crate his entire life. Oh, no way. And when they found him, he was absolutely covered in his own fecal matter to the point where they had to shear him like a sheep. And now he's got this very strange curved sort of spine and his knees feel terrible. Two big swollen knees. Do they move much? Oh dear. I know Michael very well. When he's looking at Jimmy, I can see that he is pretty shocked. It's crikey, this knee is just something else, isn't it? God, you can just feel it grating. That is not very nice at all. As you move those knees around, it's, I mean, it's bone on bone, and it grates and it crunches, and it's just horrible. All right, old man. You won't be impressed. He's real just tucked up, isn't he? Carrying that back left, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, he's been very brave, isn't he? Both those knees, particularly the left side, they're toast. There's nothing you can do. There's, there's going to be no cartilage in those knees. They don't move very much. They, they've got to be painful. OK, so we'll just have to step outside, get x-rays. The extent of the problem becomes even clearer on the x-rays. Straight away, that does not look very nice at all. It's terrible. Sclerosis here, effusion here. So that is horrible. They would, they would make it onto the rostrum of the worst knees ever, yes. Knee replacement would be the best option. If it goes well, that's the best option for the dog, no question. The other option, which we can do if a knee replacement didn't go right, the other salvage option is to just fuse it, get the dog out of discomfort. He's just the nicest dog, isn't he? And he's had a hell of a time by the sound of things. We can certainly help him out and fusion, knee replacement. They're the options. 
Michael, great to see you as always. always Thanks great. so much for your no help worries. and advice. Yeah, yeah, and I will course. pass all that on to Jill yeah, and um, I'm sure she'll be in touch very soon. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Sense. See Thanks ya. So. saying hello Jimmy welcome you're such a good boy yes this is fun for the first time in a life of neglect and cruelty the three-year-old border collie is finally surrounded by love it must seem to him very strange the fact that people are being kind to him I think he's becoming happier every day Jimmy's temperament is wonderful. He has never ever growled or snapped, which is amazing. Good boy. Maybe he knows we're gonna help him, I don't know, but he's a wonderful little dog. Hi, oh, hi Scott. How are you? I'm fine, thank Mwah. you. Mwah. Good to see you. Yeah, come in, I've got you a cup of Ooh, tea. Oh, lovely, thank <laughs> you. Later that day, Scott arrives to take Jimmy for his major surgery. But first, he wants to reassure Jill. Someone looks comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's made himself at home, don't he you? He really does. Who <laughs> has got his paws under the table, hey? You have. Unbelievable. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I think the procedure that Michael and you have decided to move forward with is a great one because it has far less complications. Yeah. So as much as it would have been wonderful to turn him into the bionic dog, what we need to do is turn him into a comfortable dog. Yeah. And this procedure is going to do that yeah. without breaking the bank and breaking yeah. you and meaning yeah. you can keep going on with your great work. Yeah. And really, at the end of the day, all we want is for him to be pain free. I think it's the right decision. Yeah. 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 I have to be determined for my dogs because I'm the only one they've got. Oh, <laughs> you big pudding, <laughs> hey? Say goodbye to Jill. Oh. Say goodbye. Hey? Hi, Jimmy. Goodbye. Their life is in my hands, really. It is, but I wish I could do more. I do. You've got your chair back, Violet. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Right, Jimmy, the big day has arrived. Yeah, no, all right, mate. mate. So, plan is we're going to fuse his knee. The whole point is it's not going to be sore once we're done. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. it gives um, him stability, takes yeah, away the pain. Yeah, exactly. And he's going to be a happier dog. Mm -hmm. At the Cherry Tree Veterinary Practice, specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton has started Jimmy's life-changing operation. It looks horrible. It looks really bizarre. Crikey, this is a very chronically inflamed knee. He and Scott are immediately horrified by what they find. I'd say of all the surgeries we've done together, mate, this is by far the most that, gruesome. That's horrible, isn't it? Look at that. Jimmy's knee looked like a bomb had gone off in it. It was horrendous. It was the worst knee I've ever seen. There was virtually nothing normal about it. First, Michael will trim the ends off Jimmy's bones. Then he'll fuse them together and fix them in place with a metal plate. When we actually made our cuts in the bone to kind of get flat surface on flat surface, those flat surfaces looked actually quite healthy. That looks pretty darn good to me. That's as straight as his leg's gonna go. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we put our big plate from up here right the way down over the top down to here, mm -hmm. and then we're done. The plate goes on without a hitch, but Michael is not satisfied. I was just a little bit unhappy with a single plate to keep it in that slightly flexed position and to support that fusion of the knee, Michael then decides that he's gonna actually place a second plate over the central part. There's a couple of here that's just a little bit awkward, but once I get them in, we'll be, I think we'll be good. But by doing so, we come up against a few problems. Because I'm stuck in these, they're not quite sitting perfectly on top of one another. As we are putting in the last screws on the second plate, I can't quite get them in because it's not perfectly aligned. Michael's just throwing everything at it to try and get the best result. Oh, I wasn't overjoyed about that. Michael wasn't happy and it meant for a very long procedure. Sorry guys, I just kind of changed my mind a little bit. 
Whether it's active or not, I mean, I think this dog has probably had an infection in this knee. I mean, look at that. A long-time mate of this dedicated specialist, Scott knows Michael will never settle for second best. Michael's a perfectionist, so he's not happy with just one plate. He needs this reinforcement plate. Sorry, guys, just a bit of a hitch in the home straight. Michael fought and fought, but it just wasn't going on. So to then, after all that work and all those hours of surgery, to remove that second plate, that was fraught. It didn't go down very well. You want to get it absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Even if it does drive you a little bit crazy. Yes. So we took off the second plate, put the first one on really, really nicely, and put another little plate on the side. That was the, the right thing to do, and it should go nowhere. So I'm really happy with it. The thing that I'm very proud of is that I didn't just go, oh, it'll do, because it'll do sometimes, sometimes doesn't do. Uh, that's not what I'm about. We want it to work. Perfectionist, possibly, yeah. Overkill, possibly, but I'll sleep a bit easier tonight, and hopefully Jimmy will as well. So finally, even Michael is happy with his work. But the operation has run two hours over time, and the surgeon is running late for an important meeting. My wife is going to kill me. Yeah. Good boy. But no one's going anywhere until x-rays confirm the surgery has been a success. So that's a straight-on view of his ankle, mm -hmm. that's a straight-on view of a hip joint, and that's a straight-on view of a knee. So, I mean, that is, that, I mean, that's a perfectly straight leg. It looks great. Really pleased with that. Mm, just call Jill soon, hey? Call mummy. Until everything's gone well. A very long surgery, but that knee has been fused within an inch of its life, hasn't it? Yes, it has. This is the start of good new life for you, eh? Yeah. Well, I think this is one contented pooch. What do you think? Isn't it just, yeah? Amazing. Scott has dropped in on Jill to check on Jimmy's progress. He's so much happier in himself. It's just incredible that we've been able to do this for him. Come on, let's see how you're going. Good boy. The surgery is a success. Yes, it's a salvage procedure. He has a knee that's now fused, but the pain is gone. And that was the whole point of this, to give him a nice pain-free life and allow him to enjoy himself for the first time in his life. What's his future hold? Well, we have a wonderful home lined up for him. She's a wonderful person. She's very patient and caring and... Everything Jim yeah, deserves. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be adored for the rest of his life, and I know that's absolutely what he deserves. It's been such a great journey, and a great journey with you as well. Yeah. <laughs> Until the next time we've got another sad case we have to fix, eh? <laughs> And then the dream team will be back together again. Yeah, hey? I hope so. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Cheers On the Gold Coast, a distressed puppy is being rushed in. Oh, he's shaking, little chap. And Dr. Alex urgently needs to find out what's happened. What's your what name? name's Hendrix. Hendrix. The puppy has been viciously attacked by an 80 kilogram bull mastiff. His owner, Melissa, was so badly injured trying to break up the fight. Her sister, Alexandria, has had to take over and get treatment for Hendrix. She's so concerned about her puppy. She didn't care about herself. She didn't even want us to take her to the hospital. She was like, just take the puppy to the vet. On talking to Alexandria, I find out more of the real story. Melissa, who is Hendrix's owner, is in hospital. She tried to get Hendrix out of the jaws of the other dog. It's all right. She's been badly injured and she might even lose a finger. I can only imagine how frightening that experience must have been, but it just shows you what people will do in that situation to save their pet. And it just pinned him down? Or... Oh, we don't know. God, that must have been yeah. traumatic for you. Yeah. You did really well to get here. And what we're gonna do with little Hendrix now is give some pain relief. We need to try to get him to feel a little bit better and he's shaking and in shock at the moment. Let's assess his injuries and then we can work out what we're gonna to need to do to help him. All right? I think I'm still a bit in shock. I wasn't expecting to hear my sister scream like that. I was like, I don't think it's like registered yet. The whole thing about like, you know, what's gonna to happen to my sister? I don't know if she's okay. I, I don't know, we just left her and brought the puppy here. 
This is such a challenging situation to be faced with. I've got a really upset family, a traumatised little puppy, and the possibility of an unknown number of injuries. Good man, he's a good boy. I think we just start with some vital signs. Yeah. Then we'll go over and see if we can work out exactly where he's been attacked. Oh, his heart's racing. I really think that's just got to be the shock. Now that the distressed little pup has been given pain relief, Alex and vet nurse Kate can start taking a closer look at his injuries. Let's try and get this collar off if we can. Really want to check him all over, see exactly where these puncture wounds are and how bad the damage is. Oh, it's OK. It's OK. See them, hey. Stand up. He really doesn't want to stand up, does he? Let's have a look under here. Hey. Little ones here, but they're very superficial. They don't even fully go through the skin by the look of it. I'm looking over Hendrix and I'm seeing some red marks, but I'm not seeing any deep puncture wounds. And that's surprising because Alexandria is telling me that Hendrix has been attacked by a much bigger dog. Yeah, I'm thinking we're actually going to have to clip his hair off to make sure that we're not missing them because I can't see them. Oh, what's that? I'm just going to clip that hair away from that area. Oh, there we go. There's wounds there, but they're not full thickness puncture wounds. You can never be complacent with dog bites. We're going to need to clip further and make sure that there's not more damage there. Where are your bite wounds? I think we really want to clip up this area here because this is where I was really worried. Can you clip that hair off? Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's a tooth mark that's just gone right through. We're definitely going to need to look into that clean that out. There's a deep puncture wound from a tooth and that fits in with exactly what Alexandria has been telling me, which was that Hendrix was bitten across the stomach by the big dog. One thing I'm worried about is whenever you've got one puncture wound, there's often another one, the other side of the bite. From that full grab, yep. both sides? Yeah. So we're going to have to keep looking and see if we can find any more. Mm. Just need to do a little bit on you your other side. Over? Baby, look at that bruising already. Oh, yeah, you can boy. actually see that. Can you see that, where that's all swollen? Big concern with dog bites is that if a tooth pierces through into a body cavity, it can damage organs, it can set up nasty infections. That's what we're really worried about. I think that's the other side of the, of the grab. Where he's grabbed him. Yeah, he's got one tooth in there. This one hasn't actually broken the skin, but he's lifted that whole area off. So bruised. Yeah. This means that we're going to have to anaesthetise Hendrix and surgically explore this wound to see how deep it goes. Will you go over? Heavy. All right, Tiff, can you help? just help me get him up there? Yeah. The first thing we're going to do is ultrasound Hendrix and make sure there's no evidence of internal bleeding with this kind of trauma. So just looking up under the diaphragm around the liver, all I'm looking for is any free fluid. Generally in a trauma patient, if you're seeing free fluid in the abdomen, it's blood. The good news is at this stage, I'm not seeing anything like that. So hopefully we've got nothing to worry about internally and we've just got to deal with these wounds. That looks really good, actually. It's good news. The ultrasound's clear and there's no evidence of internal bleeding. So now we're going to anaesthetise Hendrix and surgically explore this bite wound, see how bad it really is. Hi, is that Melissa? Yes, it is. Hey, Melissa, it's Dr Alex Hines here. I'm the vet that's looking after Hendrix. He has got... Uh, one puncture wound in particular that we're going to need to treat surgically. Is it the one on the tummy that's bad? Yeah, it's the one on the tummy that's that we're most concerned about. I, we... I knew that's when I panicked when he got him on his belly. Yeah, I'm hoping that the big dog has just picked up a whole heap of skin and and that and that's not where like anything internal. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, how are you yeah. doing? Um. I'm at the hospital because it might have gone through my middle finger. Like, I've got bite marks on all of my fingers. I'm trying to pull his mouth open. Wow, Melissa, that was incredibly brave to put yourself between the big dog and Hendrix. I'm just calling him to be okay. Yeah, I'll give him a big hug for you, okay? You take care, Melissa. Melissa, I just feel so sorry for her. She's worried about herself. Her hands have been badly injured 
and now she's also got to worry about Hendrix. All right, my friend, are you ready to go off to sleep? I want to make sure it doesn't penetrate into a body cavity, but I also need to clean out any infection out of the wound. What I'm going to do now is explore these bite wounds that I've found so far and make sure that it doesn't go into the chest cavity. While he's asleep, we'll go over him from head to tail, make sure we haven't missed anything. These ones under his neck, they, they look really superficial, but I said that before. You never and we know. found that puncture wound, didn't we? So I reckon we take all of that hair off. And see what's under there. Yep. It almost looks like he's been scratched there, Tiff. It's just, that's nasty abrasions there, but there's nothing that goes full thickness through the skin. It would be quite painful. Satisfied there are no more puncture wounds, Alex begins to explore the bite on Hendrick's abdomen. You see that? I think I'm just going to make an incision, open that up and see what's underneath. It's really important to open up bite wounds because we don't know what's underneath. There could be hair, saliva, dirt. If I leave that behind, it's going to lead to a nasty infection. How far does it go? It looks like it's just the muscle, which is great. The major puncture hole that I was worried about, it doesn't go anywhere other than into the muscle. It doesn't go into the chest. That was my biggest concern. This is great news for Hendrix. It means he won't need any major surgery. I think he'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, it's great. OK, let's close this down. But just as they're about to close, Hendrix begins to take a turn for the worse. Can we just do a drop more on this dog? Yeah, yeah. Moment of truth, Tiff. Just one from 782 to 57. Hendrix's blood pressure has been dropping under anaesthetic. Nothing too serious, but every anaesthetic carries a risk. And the sooner we can wake him up, the better. We need to stitch up and get out of there. Are you OK? Come together pretty nicely. It's good. Hmm. It's time for you to wake up, my friend. Pop you back to bed and have a good night's sleep. Hopefully your mum's having a good night's sleep as well. It's been a rough day for everybody, I think. Are you going to wake up? Oh, now put powder on you. You're OK, baby. Hey, You're okay, baby. Okay. You're awake. Hopefully when he wakes up, you'll just think it's all a bad dream. Like a horrible nightmare. Oh, I hope yeah. he doesn't remember. We know that Hendrix is going to be OK physically. What I don't know is psychologically what the damage can be. When puppies are attacked like this, it can really traumatise them and it can affect how they interact with dogs later in life. Good boy. Hey, my man. Time to go home. 24 hours after being attacked by another dog, Hendrix is well enough to go home. I think there's people here who want to see you. Oh, look who's here. As I come into the consult room with Hendrix, there's family everywhere. And Alexandra is actually capturing the moment on her phone so she can share it with her sister, Melissa. Who's that? Who's that? He's made an amazing recovery. After one day, Hendrix is looking so much better. He's bright, his tail's wagging and he's giving kisses. It's hard to imagine that yesterday he was brutally attacked. He must be sore, but you wouldn't know it. He's just got so much love to give. He's been getting lots of cuddles, but I don't think it's quite the same as cuddles from his auntie. Yuck. Yucky. Hey, Hannah's looking so good. I'm so happy. And I'm so proud of my sister. She was so brave to stand in front of such a big dog. And he wouldn't be here today if that wasn't her bravery. And, and really, he's been so happy. I mean, I know we were worried yesterday about whether he'd been traumatised. But honestly, he has been so great today. He's been good even around the other dogs, around all the people. So, you know, I'm hoping that he can just put this behind him. How's Melissa doing, Alex? As good as he is. That's the thing that has been really stressful today. We don't know that she's going to be OK or if her hand's going to be OK. She saved Hendrix's life. That's an incredible thing to do. He's a lucky little puppy. I'm sending Hendrix home with a cone of shame. Now it's to stop him getting to the wound, but he's having a little bit of trouble getting used to it. 
Hey. He's exploring. Hey. <laughs> we'll see you later. Hey. You take care, Mr. Frillnick Lizard. You stay happy. You gotta go and cheer your mum up. That's what she needs now. All right. Thank you so see you guys. You take care, Thank okay? You. He's pulled up behind the motor. Piss, piss, piss. Nearby Coogee, the police search and rescue squad has been called out to help a trapped cat. My doorbell went about one o'clock this morning. I jumped out of bed and went to the front door and there were two policemen. And they said there was a little kitten under the bonnet of my car and was very, very distressed. I'm so grateful the neighbours did hear the little kitten because it, you know, if I'd come up in the morning and it was still there and I didn't know and I started the car, I, I mean, it, it would have hurt and it could have even killed it, I imagine. It, it just would have been horrific if something had happened to it. Come on. Can you grab him from there? Are you able to grab him? But just when the rescuers finally get their hands on the feisty kitten, it takes off into the bushes. Somewhere here, in the vicinity. So with Aileen leading the search, the neighbours have all joined in. Can you hear him? Come on, little one. Come on. Come on. We're going to look after you. Come on, where are you? He's frightened with us trying to get him out. I'm worried he'll come out and he'll just run across the road again and there's so much traffic. He, he could get hit with a car. Hey, gotcha. hey, hey, hey. Explain to me how you have... How we have this kitten. dear little kitten? Well, uh, it was early hours of Sunday morning. Two policemen rang my doorbell to say he was under the bonnet of my car. But he escaped. Cross Carrington Road, which is a very busy road, so he's, he's used up one of his lives, I feel. <laughs> and he hid in the garden all night. So eventually enticed him out about 12 midday. Yeah. It's a big weekend for a little bit. Very guy. big weekend, yeah. And the boys happened to be staying overnight, so they were there to help Grandma look after him, weren't you? Have you noticed he keeps on turning around and licking? So I'm just wondering if he might have some fleas. He does. Is it? What do you reckon this gets rid of? The thing gas. Yes. <laughs> if only it was that simple. <laughs> With the fleas treated, Chris then worms and vaccinates the runaway. Look at that. There you go. That was Didn't even like notice it. Had, wasn't it? The most important thing before anyone gets too attached, mm -hmm. which might be a little bit too late. <laughs> uh, we should probably check it for a microchip. Yeah. Did you hear a beep? What do you reckon that means? We can keep it. Chris now needs to notify the council and local animal shelter. It'll be a week before Aileen can take the kitten home. So are you okay to wait a few days before you take him home? For five-year-old Logan, a week is a very long time. He'll be all right, Logan, with Dr Chris is going to look after him. <laughs> I think it would be heartbreaking to not keep him now. And I have been thinking about getting another cat, so... Yes, maybe it was fate. I almost hope no one comes to collect him. Because you look at Logan and Declan, they've already become so attached, they'll be devastated if they have to give up their new little buddy. Mate, how did you get across here? Look at it. Madness. One week later, and nobody's claimed the runaway kitten. It's the last time you've ever crossed this road. So Chris is delivering a very special parcel mm -hmm. to some very happy boys. Hey. Dr Chris, Declan, look, look who's here. here. Look who's here. Isn't he beautiful? Hey. Do you want oh. to hold him, Logan? Remember how to hold him? Are you good? Oh, very good. You're a dear little fellow, aren't you? I'm very happy to have him. Very happy to have him. It's just nice to have that other little heartbeat in the house. And the boys will love coming over to see him. I'll leave you the task of taming. Yes, yes, all one. right. I, I'll do my best. Don't Thank worry. you for bringing him to us. 
So the dogs arriving today have been rescued from a meat farm. They are dogs that are either bred for their meat or they're often stolen or they're ex-pets that have been picked up. <laughs> They're kept on these farms, fattened up, and then once a year there's the Yulin meat festivals when these dogs are basically tortured and killed, and it's horrendous. They're like death camps, really. The Korean government and lots of, you know, young Koreans are obviously anti this now. They're working at closing most of these farms down and rescuing and taking out most of these dogs. Dogs are complex, emotional, sentient beings, so they understand what's going on around them. So the thought that these poor animals live a life where they're unloved, and when it comes to their final moments, they see what's going to happen to them. It's just, it, it just, you can't, you just can't bear thinking about it. It's awful. These will be the first Korean meat trade dogs to arrive in the UK after being rescued by the charity Humane Society International. <laughs> So we're looking quite shy, a little bit traumatised. Hello. London-based All Dogs Matter has been entrusted with finding the new homes. To be able to make just even the slightest bit of difference and have a connection that makes them think, you know what, maybe people aren't horrendous, which they must think right now. Hello, buddy. Welcome to Britain. And I hope that these dogs might finally see a good side to people. It's just awful to think this is the first time he's been shown true affection, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, the trust that they give, considering how they're treated, is just... Well, I think maybe we can learn some lessons from them. Well, let's get you somewhere nice and warm, shall we? We've got a lovely bed set up for you. My job today is to examine them all, make sure that they have survived the journey OK, and then give them their first set of vaccinations. Each dog is taking to its environment differently. While some seem relaxed, others are a lot more fearful. She won't bite. <laughs> Poor Lulu, she's obviously seen a hell of a lot. She's one of the most nervous. Uh, she's petrified. She won't make any eye contact, won't look at you. She just doesn't want to see anything of the world. I mean, just, just wonder what she's seen in her little life. Up it's to so now. upsetting to see, isn't it? It's really, it's more upsetting now I've met them. It's really got to you, hasn't it? Yeah, now I've met them. Yeah. It's very clear the damage that has been done by these dogs being in the environments that they've been in back in Korea. These dogs have had no upbringing, no socialization, no training, no fun, no joy. And as a result, they just have nothing to give. She's completely broken down. She's just frozen. Lulu is clearly severely traumatized. What's gonna be the hard part is teaching this beautiful dog to be a dog again. We do need to take a different approach when trying to examine dogs like this because you simply have no history. And if anything, you know that they're from pretty bad beginnings. So they're going to be nervous, some of them fearful, some of them aggressive as a result of being fearful. So it is a case of just gently moving forward, doing the best for them, but trying to appreciate the traumas they've been through little feeling of what freedom feels mm. like, sweetie. She's Abby is the first dog Scott will be treating. The funny thing about dealing with Abby is just she's actually quite friendly. Yes, she's timid and she's nervous and she's shy, but she's not aggressive. And you think, you know what, after what they've been through, if they were trying to bite my face off, I'd understand it. But yet she's still got room in her heart for affection, which is just so desperately sweet. <laughs> A little bit unsure of noises. Well, I suppose in her past, those sorts of noises could have meant death. Oh. To think they might have actually seen... Being grabbed out yeah. of the cage. We're sitting here now, so yeah. come in and grab her out. Sorry, and kill her kill right her in front, front of the... Of the oh, just, it's not worth thinking about. Yeah. But sadly, it's a reality and it's happening. Yeah. We just need to stop it happening. Yeah, and for this little girl, she just needs to learn that she can be safe and confident here and no one's going to do that to you. It is a real privilege today to be the vet for these dogs. OK, Abby, so you're going to be a brave girl. The first vet in the UK to examine them, give them a vaccination and then help them on their way. Hey, that's the first step to your forever home. Yes. I was really gearing myself up for a really difficult job today. 
that these dogs would really make it hard to get these vaccinations in them to start the process of, of a healthy new life. Good girl. Good girl. But most of them, friendly, sweet, just thoroughly gorgeous creatures. So a little mocker here is behaving a little bit more like what you'd expect from I a think meat so, dog. Yeah. A Nervous bit more aggressive and, and a little bit of an aggression, yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to have to be careful here. Getting into the cage with Mocha and Jane, you can see that this dog is just quite fearful, quite nervous, and also a little bit reactive. And it's those dogs you can't read very well, and sometimes they go from fearful to aggressive. All right. Not stupid. You know exactly what this is, don't you? I mean, he's acting just like you'd expect a dog from a meat farm to behave. He's like, all people are scum, yeah. and I don't trust one single one of you. Hey? Understandably, that type of rope would have been the kind of thing that would have been put around other dogs that he would have seen back in Korea and would have been dragged out to their deaths. So clearly he's going to be worried about that. Good boy. Now, we're really sorry about that. Good okay. Boy. We're not trying to do anything mean to you. No, we're not. No, we're not. Okay, so I'm just checking the fact that Mokra is definitely a boy. And? He is, but he's got a bit of an issue in that he only has one descended testicle. Okay. So he's a crypt orchid. So the other one, I can't feel it in the inguinal canal. So it means that that testicle is likely in, still in his abdomen. So okay. when he gets neutered, we'll have to go fishing in there to try and find, and find it. it. And remove it. Good boy. Although I've picked up a condition in Mocha that does need surgery, I just don't feel that his emotional state is strong enough for him to leave the supportive environment of the kennels. So I think it's best I leave him here in the caring and loving arms of Jane, but I will be coming back to pick him up soon. Let's see, we didn't even need the muzzle. Hey? Eh? No, we didn't. No. Right, so who's next? Most of the new arrivals are Jindos, originally bred in South Korea for hunting. So the next the patient others. kennel manager okay. Jane introduces right. to Scott. Hello, Jack. Stands out. Hello. Hello, mate. Okay. Wow. Well, that's a very friendly hello, isn't it? Good boy. Should we go in and have a look at Yeah, here? please. Hi, Jack. Jack is a very sweet little beagle cross. He's very chilled, very happy, very waggy tail dog. He's clearly an ex-pet dog that unfortunately got caught up in the dog meat trade. So I had noticed with his left eye. Yes. I'd like you to have a look at that, please. Yeah, I can see. So he's got a cherry eye, an enlargement of the gland that hides in the third eyelid. It's prolapsed out, becomes more irritated, gets larger, stays out. So it's probably very likely that Jack has had that his whole life and something I can easily fix with a little bit of surgery, can't I? Brilliant. Yeah, but I can see also at the same time, he's probably, are you an entire male? <laughs> yes, sorry to do that straight away. A bit rude, isn't it, hey? So we need to new to you. We need to sort your eye out and then we can find you a lovely new home, but he is not gonna have any trouble, I don't think so. I think he'll be straight out. Yeah. Jack's a really happy boy and far less traumatised than some of the others. All right, good boy, brave boy. So I think he's the perfect candidate for me to take back to the practice to give him all the procedures that he needs so he's ready for his forever home. That's my good brave girl. Before Scott heads back to Richmond with Jack, there's one last rescue dog to look at. Lily just has no spark in her at all. There's no energy, there's not even any fight. I can hear a heart, now we just need to fill it with some love, don't we? Yes. Okay, good girl. So now I need to vaccinate you. I'm so sorry. It is literally like having a soft toy that you need to vaccinate. She just doesn't react. She is just given up. She just doesn't know what it's like to be a dog, doesn't know what it's like to enjoy life, to be outside, to be loved, to be cared for, to be trained, to be fed. Do you feel like you need to cuddle her for years and years to make up for everything that's uh, been done to her, everything she's seen? Mm, we're sorry. Mm, it's going to get better. Yeah, well. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.